My name is Marie Smith, and I'm a former NAC Nursing Advisory Committee Chair, and I've been affiliated with the school hmm, over 10 years, 10 or 12 years, something like that. The Nursing Advisory Committee is really a community cheerleading group for the School of Nursing. We're translational. We provide um, education for um, nursing in terms of um, we provide scholarships for current faculty as they proceed uh, as they obtain advanced degrees. We help uh, undergraduate students with scholarships. We help nursing faculty with their research projects. And we also do some community education through our annual luncheon and other get-togethers where we bring members of the community either out to the school or have individual receptions in people's homes. A friend of mine with whom I had worked on another nonprofit had suggested that I might be interested in it. And I was not very familiar with the Health Science Center School of Nursing. And I said, well, let me hear more about it. And I came to a meeting or two and I thought, well, this, this is interesting. I was very supportive of the other schools of nursing where I have worked or gone to school. And I thought it might be fun to kind of bridge the community with the Health Science Center again to begin to provide little portals of information and understanding of what goes on here. I went to college ostensibly to be an English teacher, but in the 70s that did not look to be too lucrative, so I had always enjoyed volunteering in a hospital and transferred into nursing and absolutely loved it. I worked in primary health care in Appalachia for a while after graduation, and then I got my master's degree and worked as a pediatric nurse practitioner in pediatric hematology oncology. I had a joint appointment at Duke, and so I saw patients 70% of the time and taught 30% of the time. It was with, with the School of Nursing and the School of Medicine. And then eventually I got a job again. I was offered an opportunity to work back at Vanderbilt where I had gone as an undergraduate and the same sort of scenario where I taught 30% of the time and saw patients 70% of the time. But I enjoy writing, I enjoyed speaking, um, love doing home visits, I love doing sort of what I call translational work between the medical center and local communities to understand everything from sickle cell hemophilia to leukemia or whatever hemoglobinopathies that that child's family may be dealing with. I always loved telling my friends when I worked in Nashville or Durham about what nursing was doing and how dynamic it was and so I it gave me an opportunity to do that again <laughs> uh, and to be again to sort of translate between the community with the School of Nursing and there have been a number of young folks that I've encouraged to go to the nursing program here, uh, both undergraduate uh, to get a baccalaureate degree as well as master's and doctoral level studies. So I'm excited. When I first became involved with it, they were not, um, they were they were active in little pockets of information. They would have breakfast and I don't want to be demeaning. I mean, they didn't, they weren't as active as I could foresee them being. So they, um, I be sat on the, sat at the table for a while and became a part of the process that was interviewing the new dean, uh, the current dean. And when Eileen was interviewed, she saw great potential and I saw great potential and energy in her. And I thought, if she comes, I'm going to really go to bat for her and help her raise money, raise awareness, and raise support. A lot of times people are down on what they're not up on or they don't understand something and so it's easy to not be 
persuaded to support something. If you see a football team, everybody understands football, but it's not till you're a part of a healthcare system, either yourself personally or your family or a close friend, that you become aware of the difference that excellent nursing can make or excellent health care. I remember one of our strongest uh, cheerleaders at one point was Bill Henrich after he had had a bone marrow transplant and he spoke to the impact that nurses had on his stay in the hospital and his recovery. So I, I tried to bring that out to the community as well as bring the community in to see the labs, the sim labs in the School of Nursing and how much that is leveraged learning not only for nursing but also for the other health communities here. I've brought people from uh, Texas Lutheran to be able to see the programs that exist here before they started their School of Nursing and trying to build other bridges not just in the immediate Bear County but in surrounding areas too. At that point, uh, Eileen had just, I can't remember if she had been there a year or maybe not even a year. And I said, what would be your hopes and dreams? What would you like to see? And instead of just having people have a nice lecture and learn, she said it would be great if we could, you know, raise more monetary support. So I thought, well, let's look at what grants are available in the state, what grants are available nationally, and how can we help leverage that with the development department at the School of Nursing at the time. And we did a, one of my friends does strategic planning for nonprofits and she led the NAC through a day, a day and a half session where everybody got really pumped up about what could happen if we brought more, just not funding, but community support to what we were doing from a legislative standpoint, legislative advocacy for healthcare, as spe and specifically nursing, as well as community support in, in terms of funds. It was seeing how energized the committee was. And I don't, it, it sounds deleterious to say that the committee was not active. I think the committee enjoyed working together, but there wasn't a sharp focus on where we were going. And I felt like it really honed the focus and uh, was able to leverage an impact. We were able to write grants that were able to get the simulation lab funded. So there, there are things that were incremental, but in the big picture, they've made a big difference. So it was, there's not just one tipping point, but it's a series of little tipping points that have made a large impact, I think. It's also nice to be able to see faculty members who've been funded and gotten that funding leveraged at a national level to do work that they're doing in the community, whether it's with children, families, elderly, veterans. It's been nice to see that it's like planting seeds and seeing it watered by a little bit extra research and then being able to leverage, again, some larger funds to support the work they're doing. Ownership, <laughs> and I love seeing, again, fruits of the work that have been born and encouraging new NAC members to become involved, not just in a fundraiser, but in some specific outreach or community building pieces. I don't feel the weight of responsibility quite like I did, but I still have a lot of ownership. Um, it might be similar. All of my children are gone and graduated and well on their ways. They're in their mid-30s. And I have a lot of ownership for what they do, but I don't, I'm not a driver. So it's the same way. I kind of, I'm excited to see what's going on at the school, especially with all the uh, physical changes that are happening with the structure and seeing how the doctoral program is really blossoming and I can't wait to see its impact over time. Uh, it's really fun to see the way the School of Nursing has been valued by other, the other medical communities here. 
not just facilities like University Hospital or Methodist Hospital, but also the medical school, the dental school, the allied health schools, how they uh, feed together, work together, support one another, and really leverage the overall impact of our health science center. I see both the PhD and the DNP programs providing a depth of experience and education for future learners. And I'm sure you've probably heard that many of faculty members are graying and retiring and we need to be able to shore up the educational opportunities for future nursing graduates. And as we arm the uh, faculty with experience and education, They're, they will be available not only locally but in our region to teach the future nursing leaders of our state. I have not done this before, I, so it's been kind of fun to work with a blank slate knowing that whatever we do, I think people are going to enjoy whether it's celebrating people who've graduated or looking at the future of healthcare through the lens of nursing, all of those will be great opportunities to be um, windows into our world for our community, both um, people receiving healthcare as well as people coming into healthcare as a patient. But I'm excited about it. And I'm reading about people or hearing about people I have yet to meet, so I look forward to it. <laughs> One of the things that's been interesting is they've, the school has wanted to acknowledge people over the 50 years who've been benchmarks locally and maybe nationally for what's going on. So hearing about them, even though some of these people, some may not be with us still, but um, many who are in the area or nationally around, I think it'll be, it'll build self-esteem for people to see the work that has gone on before. I, I love reading history, so I love seeing the impact that people have made and the work that they have done that continues to impact the way we see things now. Doesn't mean I wanna go back to those white starch uniforms and little pillbox hats or whatever they look like, but to see the how people people's lives have been improved, the quality of life has been improved by the little steps that have gone on over the 50 years. The only thing I can think of and I, when I read that question was um, how the face of nursing has changed and not just in attire, but in the types of people providing care. I have a second cousin who is six seven, former football player who's in nursing school. When I was in nursing school, you probably would not have seen that. But the fact that we have people from all walks of life, um, all backgrounds, whether they've been in computer programming or they've been a medic in the military, the opportunity for healthcare has really, in this sector, has really blossomed. And as I look forward to what does healthcare look like in the next 10, 15, 20 years, we're gonna need a battalion of people from all walks of life to be the gateways for people's healthcare. Whether it's in a clinic, whether it's home care, whether it's in an ICU, and that's what I love seeing. The diversity of people coming in the door will help provide the diversity of care that's needed for the future. I think it builds hope for the future.